Hi, my name's Angie, and I'm part of the Impulse Maintenance software team. We're here today to provide you with a short walkthrough of the Impulse system. To start, Impulse is a web-based program that can be accessed through a desktop or mobile device. This makes capturing information against your important work easy and fast, so you can get back to your other activities. We also have a mobile app that allows technicians to fill out their work orders, even when they're offline. When I log into Impulse, the first thing I see is the Maintenance Advisor. This is a great tool that allows us to have a view of all the information needed for decision making in one space. The Maintenance Advisor consists of the dashboard to house all of the reports we need to see regularly, and the calendars to view our workload. The Enterprise Edition of the software also includes the resource leveling and resource planning tools to give us more control over how our work is allocated. We'll talk more about the Maintenance Advisor later on in this video. When we want to get around in the program, there are a few ways to get where we need to go. The first option is the main menu located here. This is organized by major areas of impulse, and when I click on any of these menu options, I can see we have additional submenus or record areas to choose from. The next option is the breadcrumb trail. This keeps track of the areas we've navigated to in any logged in session. I can use this to toggle back and forth between records I use most often. Finally, we have the global search in the top right corner of the screen. I can manually type keywords or scan a barcode to search every field in the database for something specific. This returns my search on one page, broken down first by the record area, then by the specific records my search value was found on. At its core, Impulse is an asset-driven work order system. So while there is a lot we can do to customize and localize this user interface to your specific needs, it still wants to come back to that asset, making sure you're able to track what's important to you. The assets are located here in the main menu and are divided into five different asset types, equipment, buildings, rooms, grounds, and vehicles. All impulse records are displayed in the standard impulse structure with a list view on the left, a form view divided into sections in the middle, and an area for comments on the right. I can also see that the main menu is anchored in the top right corner no matter where I am in the database. While each asset allows us to capture details specific to the type, they all share certain fields. These are what we call global fields and they are location, system, department, and cost center. We'll notice each asset type also has this in service field to mark an asset in or out of service. Another thing that is common across all of the assets is the cost of maintenance field. This is auto calculated and is keeping a running total of the total cost of maintenance from work order history for this asset record. The assets also provide this service section, which allows us to track meters, and the inventory section, which allows us to build our bill of material for parts used on the asset. We can add to this list manually, but Impulse is also doing this automatically as we close work orders. We have a media section for all records in the database. This allows us to upload important files related to our records. We can upload pictures, PDF manuals, CAD drawings, and video files to name a few. The More menu is a valuable tool we can use to view work order history, PMs, and open work orders. Under Procedures, we can create new activities like work orders, requests, and PMs from the asset record. Another important aspect of the system is the inventory. You can track your spare parts and supplies as well as tools. In the inventory records, we can track suppliers we purchase our parts from. We can use these units of measure to break down how we interact with our inventory. We can track specific stock locations, quantities, and min-maxes in the stock area section. This will also show us what is encumbered on an open work order and or set to reorder on an open purchase requisition. The purchase requisitions make it possible to create orders for new parts to go to purchasing, accounting, or suppliers. The purchase requisitions will populate the supplier information, billing and shipping locations, and total our parts order. Closing these requisitions will automatically update the stock quantities on the inventory records. Impulse also allows us to create cycle count records to keep up with our stock variances. 
We can use the program to create cycle counts based on filters or random samples and set up schedules to complete these cycle counts. While the asset is the core of Impulse, the work order is the heart of the system. We can track and complete both planned and unplanned work orders. The unplanned work orders can be created right from the work order record using this plus sign. This is generally done in a work performed scenario. We can also convert maintenance request records. This process starts with the requester creating and submitting a maintenance request. Here's an example of the request form that can be used. Since requesters typically only have access to the maintenance request records, they do not use a license when logging into Impulse. This allows for unlimited maintenance requesters to report the work that is needed from your team. Once a request is submitted in the database, the maintenance team has different options to manage it. You can reply to the requester to ask for more information, convert it to a work order, or cancel it if a work order is not necessary. We also have the ability to set predefined approvals for these requests. The information that's entered on the maintenance request follows over to the converted work orders. Here we can see the work order description is the same as the request. In the general section, I can see the related request ID and requester. I can also see this work order is unplanned. In the work order information section, the asset entered on the maintenance request form is populated here. This section is going to allow us to predefine the task or activity to be done on the work order, the asset we are working on, the person assigned to the work order, and any parts needed to complete the job. These are the core components and all have their own record areas in the system, as we saw with the asset records. On the financial section, we can see the cost breakdown of the work order. Impulse calculates total cost based on part or supply, labor cost from employees and or vendors, and any miscellaneous cost input. This section is also where a maintenance technician can mark the work order complete. The default completion process in Impulse is two-part, where the maintenance technician marks the work order complete, then management reviews to confirm the information that's needed for reporting has been captured and closes out the work order. Planned maintenance follows a similar process, but starts with a scheduled maintenance record. When creating a scheduled maintenance record for recurring activities like preventative maintenance, we're just creating a work order template and setting it to a recurrence. The work order information section allows us to link the specific task and asset we're working on. If we know that every time the activity needs to be done, it'll be a specific person that does it, we can assign them on the scheduled maintenance level. Similarly, if we know the job requires certain parts, we can link the inventory now. Once this is done, we set the schedule. In Impulse, we can choose from two different types of time-based schedules. Floating, which says the next due date is based on the last done date, or Fixed, which says that the next due date is based on the scheduled date. We can also use meter-based scheduling and have our due dates determined by usage. Depending on need or preference, we can also create a combination of time and meter-based schedules. For example, we could set a scheduled maintenance record to come due in 3 months or 3,000 miles, whichever one comes first. Like a maintenance request record, these scheduled maintenance records need to be converted into work orders for assignment and completion. Conversion can be a manual or automated process. This open scheduled maintenance tool empowers us to easily find and convert our scheduled maintenance records to work orders. These planned work orders bring over information from the scheduled maintenance records. I can see the work order type, work order group, and due date. I can see that this is marked as planned, and in the work order information section, we can see the specific task, asset, personnel, and inventory. As we process our work orders in the system, Impulse is using that information to populate reports. These reports can be housed in a central location under the maintenance advisor. The dashboard allows us to add list view layouts that give us really detailed reports we can use to track things like downtime, outstanding work orders, and cost of maintenance. We can also set up graphic reports on the dashboard. These reports are a great way to get a snapshot of information based on charts and gauges that can trigger notification based on parameters we set. 
While we're in the Maintenance Advisor, I can see there are other features we can use with the dashboard to give us a full picture of our maintenance operations. The Calendar feature allows us to create calendars based on work orders, maintenance requests, scheduled maintenance records, and asset-based dates we want to keep an eye on. We can click on the calendar events to see their details. We can also drag and drop these events to change the date on the records they correlate to. The Enterprise Edition of Impulse takes planning a step further with resource leveling and resource planning. Resource leveling allows us to see what work orders are assigned to our maintenance team and allocate work equally. The resource planning allows us to see the scheduled maintenance records or, for many, the preventative maintenance activities we have coming up so we're staffed appropriately. The Asset Status Board is another great reporting feature. We can use this to track breakdowns, scheduled maintenance, or asset-based information like life expectancy on our critical assets. We can organize these boards to display at a high level using our location, system, department, or cost centers. Alternatively, we can display these boards down to the individual assets that need to be monitored. Then set color criteria to call out information that's important to us. This was a basic overview of Impulse, but this program has a lot more features and functionality to offer, including tools for advanced customization and robust email notifications. Through our implementation process, we ask what your workflows are and how you want the system to work. Then we set it up to reflect that. For a more customized demo or for any questions, please contact us.